I bet you didn't know this about Didan Kimathi. Didan Kimathi is well known in Kenya and even beyond the African borders. He was a freedom fighter, dedicated teacher, great conversationalist and possibly even a Casanova. Today we are going to take a look at the man who was central to the Mau Mau uprising. Mau Mau was a movement founded with the purpose of removing white land grabbers who had taken up land previously owned by Kenyans. Initially, Mau Mau fighters were mainly Kikuyu but later, Meru, Embu, Kamba and even Maasai joined in the struggle. And they had good reason to join the struggle too. Africans were not allowed to grow cash crops. To add to this, they had to endure forced labor by building roads and working in settler farms. There was also the issue of the hut tax, which was an insidious way the British used to compel Kenyans into working for the settlers. Pretty soon Owan Didan Kimathi rose up. He was a compelling, a magnetic, and irresistible orator and he used this gift to bring in crowds who helped in the Mama uprising. Those who knew him said he had a tremendous sense of humor that could keep a whole house roaring with laughter. Kimathi also loved to write and this would be seen nowhere else than in his time in the forest. He was obsessed with documenting the fighting activities that took place between the freedom fighters and the colonizers. Many of those who knew Kimathi say that he was a stubborn man who had a very independent mind. It appears there was some beef going on between Kimathi and another Mau Mau general called General Stanley, the latter stating that Kimathi wanted to get rid of him. Kimathi enlisted with the King's African Rifles in 1941 but later deserted after seeing the terrible conditions African soldiers were being subjected to. He was also installed as the Prime Minister of the Kenya Parliament when he was in the forest in 1955. What most people don't know is that Kimathi was a deeply spiritual man, often leading Mau Mau freedom fighters in prayers. He also loved to read the Bible especially the Old Testament. When praying alone, he would pray near his favorite tree, a sacred tree among the Kikuyu, the Mogumo tree. Still on his spirituality, Kimathi's followers believed that he had the power to alter the course of rivers, and to transform the lands that the settlers had taken into lakes of stagnant water. Kimathi had a woman, more like a second wife in the forest named Wanjiro. She wasn't the first woman Didan Kimathi had taken a liking to in the forest, but she was certainly the last. She was more than a match for any man. It was said that she could run like a gazelle, a fight like a cat and shoot like an archer. And it appears that Kimathi's God was with him, guiding him supernaturally. Kimathi had an uncanny, mysterious way of getting away from the trap set by the colonial government soldiers, usually through dreams. Didan Kimathi was shot by a Kenyan, a collaborator from his own Kikuyu tribe on October 21, 1956. He shot Kimathi on his right thigh and was rewarded with £150 by the colonial government, of which he went ahead to buy a lorry which he intended to use for public transport. However, the locals never hired or used it. In fact, at night people would use stones to scratch the body of the bus with taunting words. On November 27, 1956 Kimathi was sentenced to hang by the neck until death after a kangaroo trial by an illegal colonial government. He was executed on February 18, 1957 at Kamite Prison. Colonial officers buried his body in an unmarked grave within the grounds of Kamite Prison in Kenya, where he is believed to have lain ever since. A principled man Didan Kimathi was. A man who, even with his shortcomings, had a fiery zeal to see his people free from colonial rule. 